Vince is having a urination war and no and urination war with his son in law who is the man and sir i don't mind tables ladders auto correct wait did you guys catch that am i recording oh well let me finish this one text and i'm going to talk about some nxt i don't mind tables ladders and i'll tell you why i'm sending this text i don't mind tables ladders there's a kendo stick Or occasional pliers, but I draw the line at using recipro recipro casing saws. And gas powered weed whackers. Unless you're itch weed. Once you are itch weed. Well, hello, folks. You caught me in the middle of doing something. I was texting someone about pro wrestling. In fact, I'm here to talk about even more pro wrestling and the fact that I just got home. And, well, the first thing I had to do, I had to have my adult beverage, some strawberry lemonade, and lemon-flavored vodka. I need to refuel. I just went, ooh, under my nose. NXT. And I actually learned... But Larry Zabisco is still wrestling in Orlando, Florida. Garrett. That name is familiar. So Alexi Gomez. I've heard of her. I've heard of Amber Nova. She has too many abs. Don't know who she is. Oh, yeah. I'm, what I'm looking at. The fun thing about going to NXT matches that every so often, oh, Eva Lee's. Yep, let's see, I'll get that for a moment. Is that you always get some some of these cards? See them on your window. Eventually, one day, some of these pro wrestlers might actually be here in NXT. I can get them to sign that. And I guess the real shock. I have no idea they actually would allow this, and I have no idea where it's going to be. But no peace, no ground. CZW, CZW, that's zone wrestling. You can tell by that one guy's shirt, CZW. Is coming here to Florida. And if you've never seen CZW, um, this might be like the only rated R content I've ever had. And that's not the lighting, folks. Well, that is lighting. There's lighting. There's lighting. That red stuff. Here. That's not lighting. So that's weird that I didn't even know they were allowed to come to Florida. Florida's kind of weird like that. 
Yeah, I also got a text. Let's see here. Man, you guys got to see all the inside the goodies. Occasional pliers. Thumbtacks are okay. Thumbtacks. Thumbtacks. Gummy bears. Jolly Ranchers. And Legos are okay. Oh, Larry Zabisco is still wrestling. Larry Zabisco is still wrestling. Shocked emoji. Emojis are fun. I need to get more of them. I need some better ones. But let's see here. I'm just thirsty. I don't know why. I think it's because I had some red wine last night. And I know I was like near dehydrated yesterday for some reason. I do apologize for that. No, but with all that, all that nonsense, let's talk about some NXT. I can throw that away at least. That's the old one. And this already did not show up. Made me mad. And I didn't say I could go online, because honestly, I would have left anyway. But let's see. So this was NXT at Sanford. And so there were, there were no good, really, autographs. I couldn't get in line for actual wrestling. <laughs> Zabisco. It's one of the all-time greats. He actually is. Thumbtacks you can still use. Gummy bears are funny, though. Gummy bears and Legos are I mean, bears and Legos are funny. Bears are funny. I'm surprised. Yano never used those in a match. Yeah, no, yeah, no. My favorite pro wrestler from New Japan. But um, so this was NXT Live in Sanford. My little notes. Um, this was a weird show, mainly because normally in Florida, on the Florida house house circuit, they do a lot of times like the B squad of wrestlers with an occasional really big name. For the main event, main event, but this was actually more like the C show. It's like the third string, the third string people were here. Um, so I didn't get in line to the autograph. I got there, I think, seven o'clock. No one said hi to me. Again, if you ever see this guy, I always announce where I am. Say hi to me. You got a shout out and a video dedication. I don't know. I like believability. <laughs> the gummy bear spot is awesome though. Candice LeRae's gummy bear spot is iconic. Let's see here. Come on, fun work. Whoa. Candice LeRae's gummy bear spot was awesome. Super smiley face. That smiley face. Wink. Cool dude smile. Cool dude smiley face. So where was I at NXT? Um. Yeah, they shut the line down at seven, which is kind of weird. So that's when they do that. That's when I got there. I forgot that they still have the one road rows closed. This time I was only three rows. Three rows from ringside. I mean, for $10, even if it's the third string people, that's still amazing, though. Um, for the meet and greet, it was... Oh, that's his name. I, I guess Daniel Vito. Wait, didn't he wrestle before? Let's see here. My notes. Let's see. No. Oh, Daniel Vito. 
Maybe it was Daniel Bio. Um, he was there. Jesse, who they kind of repackaged, was there, which I wasn't great happy about. Then let's see here. I know what his new name is. It is. No. Where, wait, he wrestled. No, not him. No, not then. Wow, I give that a surf and turf. No, it wasn't him. It wasn't the third match. That was fourth. Oh, Alberto Hardy Jr. Oh, Albert Hardy Jr. Who's also known as ACH. It really did have the B show feel. And even with the intro, they introduced a new announcer. He has over 10 years of sports entertainment and host experience. You might have seen him on Access TV, CBS Sports, Fox Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend, your friend, John Cusco! It's Burns! It's not that here. Good evening, everyone. Are you ready? I'm so ready. I mean, the thing was, this show normally Sanford drinks in a pretty good, good crowd, but that really wasn't that full. And you, it had the feeling of a B show because security normally like walks around, and tells people to put their their phones and cameras down fairly frequently, but they didn't do a lot of that. They're like, whatever. So with that, hey, I was happy. Because once once I figured that out, I was taking videos galore, and I, as always, you'll see those videos. So um, some of the people they said would be there. You have the tag team of Karen Q and, and Zia Lee, Umberto Carrero was going to be there, and others. So that was it. Once I heard those names, I'm like, Umberto's the biggest name there. Wow. Well, the first match, and I know someone's going to correct me because I know I'm going to get the second guy wrong. It was actually a pretty good match. It was Eric Bugenhausen and Bugenhausen.
taking on Nick, someone who watched way too much of that Vice Ant special on Bruiser Brody. Because this looks like a younger version of Bruiser Brody. Eric Bugenhausen, he has that natural charisma. His entrance, however, is way too long. Um, the Nick guy, Bruiser Nick Brody, I guess. I know you'll hear his name. Yeah, at least a much shorter entrance. I think I took a bad, bad space there. I'll figure out something in the editing process. Can you, you guys get to see this? Uncut and raw! Um, you definitely know who the heel in the face was. Bugenhausen was obviously the, the face. The other guy uh, was, the, um, was the heel. Nick was the heel. Nick just played really the, the brute role. The, if that's what he's going to be, the bruiser role. He did his job A number one. Um, Bugenhofen, he's, he's okay in the ring. I mean, they neither, neither of them had great wrestling holds. Um, I mean, that just might be me. I mean, Bugenhofen has great character work. The other guy, Nick Nick Brody, also has great... I don't know what his name was. He's just going to be Nick, Bruiser Nick Brody. I mean, he's, he's great. Both of them have great character work. I mean, it was a it was a brawler versus a charismatic face, so it had that kind of dynamic throughout the entire match. And then, of course, Bugenhausen, Bugenhausen, can't pronounce his name. Wow. He went over. It was fun, though. I was, I was entertained. Again, the intro was just way too long. And, hey, that just might be me. Some people in the fans were going absolutely bonkers for him. But it was a good, solid cheeseburger match. And then the second match of the evening was a tag team match in the women's division. And let's see what I thought. 
Oh, for the Bugenhausen hat. First of all, I was sitting next to that wrestling fan. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Guy who still thinks wrestling is real. Yeah. This is Florida. But then at the end of the Bugenhausen match, I swear there was one woman in the front row. I think if she could have gotten away with it without being escorted out by the police, because I think security just would have laughed. In fact, you know what? Security would have said, Tranquilo. The police officer would have laughed. I thought for a good 30 seconds she was going to somehow take her bra off and throw it into the ring at Eric Bugenhausen. Just like um, women do to rock superstars. She just had that look and, and that way too happy face. And again, you get that way too happy face by having a couple adult beverages before you enjoy wrestling. I enjoy it afterwards. Remember, folks, I am drinking at home. Do not drink and drive. If you're going to drive, do not drink or have a, a designated driver. My public service announcement. I feel better about myself now. Or at least I feel better about drinking adult beverages on YouTube. So the second match featured MJ Jenkins and Renita Gonzalez. It's an odd team. Versus Karen Q and Zia Lee. The following contest is a tag team match scheduled for Wolfo!
And this featured a heel turn. No longer the crowd favorite. This was actually a pretty fun match. Um, Rina is definitely the strongest of all the women there. She showed that in her strength. Um, Zia and Karen Q again, they show their martial arts, arts background. Some fun spots. Um, I mean, it was a good match. Again, the double teamwork by Karen Q and Zeely was very good. Um, Renita, she knows how to get heat. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for her. This was the second time she had kind of a, a semi wardrobe malfunction. Last time she came to Sanford, her oh no, that was that was in Daytona Beach. Her her chaps fell down and were around her ankle. It was kind of funny. This time she developed a tear in her pantyhose, and I just find it interesting that women wear pantyhose in the ring. Men don't. And women shave their legs too. Sometimes the pantyhose goes to the costume, though. This was just, like, that nude color, but you could kind of tell. Because it was right beneath her butt cheeks. God, I need a girlfriend. Oh, and there might be a special guest next week, so, so, so we'll see about that. It was a fun match. I mean, a good double team. Um, again, the heels, of course, always have the heel miscue. Um, it was just really fun, though. Again, the heels, they know how to cheat. I'll tell you what, I really enjoyed this match. Wow, I, I did that? Wow. I mean, it was a fun match. I enjoyed it. The crowd enjoyed it. Everything was good. I mean, the wrestling was actually really solid for a change. Um, they bust out the Liu Kang kicks, which is pretty cool as a double, as a double team in, in the corner. It's something new. It's different. It wasn't botchy feeling. It wasn't forced. I I enjoyed it. I think the wrestlers enjoyed putting it on. The crowd was loving it. That makes it a surf and turf quality match. That leads us to the third match. Yeah, by now there were still seats available too. On the third match, it was... Oh, there were also zero, zero like known people showing up. It was Samuel Shaw, who's that creepy guy? 
versus Umberto Carrero. I mean, just that. The only good thing is, is that the creepy guy is a short entrance. It was an unusually slow start until Umberto started to do his flippy stuff. Someone said from the crowd, Stay 100 feet away from my kid's school. Oh, wow. Hey, that means at least Samuel Shaw is in character and he ditched that weird manager guy, which is always a good thing. I mean, it was a, this was a, this is another fun match for. Um, I, I don't think Umberto Carrero, Carrero could put on a bad match, I think. I mean, it was fun. It was, it was flippy by Umberto when it needed to be. The other person knew how to ground Carrero, ground, ground Umberto, so it was really good. He ragdoll. It was did the old fashioned ragdoll toss slam. That was great. Um, then there was the rolling backflip shooting star press by Umberto, and he won eventually with a springboard moonsault. I have no problem with that match. 
Um, I think only because it was creepy guy versus like super loved guy. And it just kind of started off slow. It might be me, but it was started off un uh, kind of unnaturally slow. Like, it's like, okay, um, what do you want to do here? I mean, it wasn't bad. Hard to ruin it with Umberto. It's a good cheeseburger match. Then we had a little promo going. Um, Jeff Parker and Matt Lee. Please welcome my guests at this time. One of the newest arrivals to the tag team division in NXT, Jeff Parker and Matt Lee. So, again, it was your very traditional face promo. And then Trevor Lee came out. Trevor Lee is 100%... Hey, jeez, but... Is 100% pure charisma. I mean, he gets behind that alone. And he said, well, there's some people that don't like you. And it was the first time in a long time where I saw Martel Bartel. Nine! 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 Ten. That goes back a while. And Fade Me Nightmare. So that was really cool. And then, um, you can feel the flow of the 3.0. that catchphrase it makes sense it, it, I want to say it flows but that's but that word's already there so, so that was kind of fun so I think the only bad thing is that, that teased the main event you're like really like no undisputed era no velveteen dream not even a Dijakovic showing that was it. So actually, after the fifth match of Adrian Dow versus Daniel Bio.
I do have to say, I do like uh, Daniel Bio doing that haka. That, that was pretty cool. I do like that. That's the traditional Maori greeting, or, or, or is it the Maori? I forget if it's a Maori greeting or the Maori war dance. I know the Usos used to do that back in the day. And I think for a very short time, the Gorillas of Destiny also did that in New Japan. I like that, though. Um, Adrian Dow, he's, the, again, the definite heel. The thing about NXT is that I'm not going to give a match a, bad, a really bad rating if I can figure out who, who I'm supposed to cheer for and who I'm supposed to boo. Adrian Dow is supposed to boo. He started to use his belt as a distraction. So he's using kind of an outside item to distract Daniel Bao. I'm going to boo you for that. You know what Daniel Bao is playing to the crowd? He's high-fiving people. I'm going to cheer for him. Yeah, you definitely know the dynamics. Um, it was kind of like a classic. He uh, there was the heel hubris, which is always good. To me, it was just very strike heavy. Not a lot of wrestling. Um, I did like the fact that Adrian Dow is supposed to be a, a BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. And every so often he would bust off some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu moves, but I think he has to make it slightly more believable. Like, I know when he had the, the uh, like, I don't know what lock you call this. It's like a key lock. You trap a guy's arm over under it has to look tighter and I know you don't want to hurt your hurt hurt the guy you have to make it a little bit more believable and I understand entirely it's a very fine line because trust me, you can break a guy's arm very easily, or not so much the arm, but you can just, uh, you probably could break an arm, but you could definitely dislocate an elbow or shoulder very easily by just a, they're just a hint of pressure. So I understand that he wants to be a safe worker. On the other hand, is it can't be loosey goosey, though. It's like, I can tell that. And that might come from the fact that I, I did do some grappling in college, and I would go against guys who did practice a uh, uh, jujitsu, and I could beat the one guy who was an orange belt every so often. Uh, the other guy who was a brown belt, I think he let me do things sometimes. Sometimes I would confuse him with my wrestling so I could take him down. Then he'd always get me to, to tap. He knew stuff I didn't. But every so often I, I'd surprise him with a takedown. So I, I had a slight edge there. I'd get into his guard and, and, and then it'd be like, oh, this doesn't hurt that bad. And then he'd crank it. I'm like, okay, I, I give. So I do know there's a very fine line there. And I mean, I, I'm probably just downgrading this because I know it. I uh, the knee bar. 
it wasn't a smooth transition. It was like, I'm going to get this in on you. And the other guy tried to actually help him out. And you could tell he was trying a little too hard. It just takes away that aurora of, of believability. And you're like, okay. I mean, that just might be from my basic knowledge. I'm like, someone who sees that is like, oh, wow, he's going to tap from that. Wow, that, that would probably break his knee. I can't believe he tapped. Wrestling fan. But I mean, for the most part, again, it was a hard, it was a fun match. I think the fact that I knew a little bit about jujitsu and the way those holds looked seemed a little too fake for me. I downgrade this to a ham sandwich. It's still not bad. It's just not terrific looking. And then in the sixth match, it was Caesar Benone versus Albert versus why do I say Alberta? Albert Hardy Jr. Go go ACH. This was another fun match. Um, Caesar Benoni really tried to play up the crowd. Alberto Hardy Jr. has amazing, amazing character work. Because he's so good at stealing the other guy's gimmick and mocking him with his, his, own, with his own gimmick. It made the match really enjoyable. Um, Benoni again focused more on the strikes. Which is really good. Again, coming from Brazil, I don't even know if I'll, I'll give it to him because I just don't know the better. I mean, he probably does know some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, strikes are strikes are part of at least the mixed martial arts version of of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's uh, more grappling and submissions and take uh, takedowns submissions. But I do understand that you do have to learn how to defend punches and kicks. You know, throw them. Um, so, again, Caesar Murray is really good at that. He's really good with healing it up with the crowd. Again, the, hey, kid, you want a high five? Oh, no. Not today, kid. That's just always great to watch. <laughs> so makes me chuckle. 
Um, you can hear the ref call some spots. The, the, there was a moment. Uh, Junior was up on the top rope, and the ref just said, down. And then he jumped down and got caught, I think, in like a European uppercut or like a kick. So you could tell the ref was kind of calling the spots a little bit. Just okay, but not. It's bad when if you're in the third row, you can hear it. At least you're on the and you're not in the ref just saying saying John Cena. Five moves of doom. Backdrop. Suplex. <laughs> what is it? Jump, leapfrog, duck, shoulder tackle, run, jump, shoulder tackle, leapfrog. It's just terrible. It's like, it's like body drop. Or John Cena, body drop. Really bad. Um, so, I mean, that was my only knock in this match. I, I do love that slow delay German suplex. Fun match. It did have its action packed moments. It did have its slow moments. I'm actually, it wasn't terrible. I think the one thing, again, when I can hear spots, they have to work a little bit more. It's probably an unfair criticism. But I mean, it wasn't bad. It, you know, they didn't screw anything up. Screw anything up, though. This is a good cheeseburger match. And then, whoa! It's in mission time, and there's a Sky Pirate in the crowd. Then we get to the seventh match, and they had the nine matches for this one. So I think they just had a promo. So the seventh match, it was Shane Thorne, formerly one half of TM61, versus Jermaine Payne with his manager guy.
And Shane Thorne's definitely the heel. Hey, kid, want a high five? Not today, kid. Whoa, I do need a new freaking microphone. Let me see. Here we go. Find a lapel mic again. I think this cost me like five bucks. Again, it cost me five bucks. So again, you definitely know who the heel and face was. And this is when people started to leave. I think it was just turned like 9 o'clock. I think it was 9.10 when this match started. So it was weird. It was a kind of... It was a, to me, it was a fun a Haas match. Especially with your main pain. I mean, he, hosses are so much fun. Shane is definitely the heel. Um, he does, he heals it up against the crowd, which is awesome. Oh, he had that one good thud of a kick. I like me a thud. I think I have a couple of videos in there that you've probably have seen. Um, it was a good match. Shane Thorne picked up the win. I think during the match I was looking at it. You know what? What's the... Oh, gee, I do like when he's a Haas match. This is another upgrade. This is a cheeseburger match. Then we had Jesse versus Bianca Belair. Shane, Shane, come on, Shane. The following contest is scheduled for Rockfall. Come on, Shane. Come on, Shane. Yeah. Come on, Shane.
and this was an okay match. I think there was some one botchy spot on the ropes. It's the Sanford ropes like eat people. I don't know what it is in Sanford. It must be the air or the humidity or or or, or, or the drunk wrestling fans. That top rope does not like anyone. And I hate the, I hate the fact that they repackaged packaged Jesse. Only because I think I'm old. And I know what the girl next door is supposed to look like. I mean, now this is 2019, almost 2020. The whole, I think, kind of growing up in the 80s, like I did, the girl next door was that wholesome girl who looked pretty. She had the glasses, the good in school. And you're like, wow. If I could marry her, I'd be set for life. Smart, charming, beautiful, a beautiful cute, and I'd be happy. In the 90s, the girl next door kind of went down the slide. Then the girl next door was actually a porn star. So that was the girl next door in the 90s. In the 2000s, the girl next door was knocked up. And then 2010, the idea of the girl next door is the porn star look without being the porn star. So, I mean, right now, Jessie just looks like she borrowed Dakota Kai's ring gear. She looks like Eric Florida wrestling. Because on her trunks, like you saw in the video, had, of course, palm trees, bright colors, Florida colors. I don't, I don't know. I might be old. But it was okay. Again, the top and bottoms, it looks like she stole from Dakota Kai. Uh, this was actually a, wasn't a bad wasn't a bad match. I think when I think Jesse, I think Girl Next Door, Bookworm, Glasses does the e pose on the on the ring and makes me smile. This it was full of good spots. It just I don't know the new Jesse doesn't do anything for me. It's like oh you're a generic Florida wrestler. You're your Florida chopper. Wow. <laughs> she's she's gone down a bit. Um the match itself was was pretty good. Uh, I do like the fact that they brought the stretch muffler back. You know, the first time she it looked like it was a real pain it was, looked like she was the first time she used it and was trying to figure out how you're supposed to apply it.
Bianca Belair up top? I think she, she, she wraps something up up there. Because Jessie's were bigger. You know what I'm talking about, guys. And some ladies. So I'm like, huh? They look bigger on TV. I think that's like the tenth time I've said that, though. Um, then it was an okay match. Kind of slow pace, dragged out. And you definitely knew who the heel was in Bianca Belair. People tried to get behind Jesse, but I think the fact that she lost that schoolgirl look kind of killed it, I think. And then became Jesse versus a top rope. It's never a good, th never a good sign. Uh, I, this match just didn't do it for me, folks. It's not the worst match. It's just really a can of soup. And that leads us to our main event of the evening. So in this corner, I put my microphone. I had to kind of, I had to reload. I was getting thirsty again. And I have to start cooking soon because I haven't had dinner yet. I'm glad I got that honey bun, cosmic brownie, and iced tea in the way. So you have Trevor Lee, Marcel Bartel, and Fabian Eichner versus Jeff Parker, Matt Lee, and Baba Tude. Baba Tude is back.
And this was actually kind of fun. I mean, I think the, the big thing is Trevor Lee, he is 100% heel charisma. I mean, I think he got tossed out by Baba Tude. Oh, even I felt that landing three rows deep. I mean, this had some energy to it. It was fun. It was energetic. It told a good story in the ring. And the fact that the heels wanted to heal it up. There was, of course, the heel miscue. They got over that. They had the heel tag team tactics of, I was like, ref, ref, ref. Go, 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 check on him. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And the three of them just, just pound on him. And the one guy. And, of course, the heels want nothing to do with Baba Tunde. Again, the biggest guy in the ring. And I think you'll see that. I think I'm, I, I have to figure out what picture I want to for the thumbnail for this. I might put up, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that. I might save that too for another day. Another NXT event where I'm not so quick. But yeah, this was a fun match, but again, it had that energy.
really the videos tell all. I mean, again, you had the heel corner, the heel would corner someone. They used the triple tag teams. It was really, it's actually really fun, and, and it was enjoyable. And I'll be honest, I mean, they everyone had kind of their, their spots for a while, especially the heels. The heels were really good with their spots. I mean, to me, this is a good quality surf and turf match. And my only hope is that they're saving some of the stars. They know Memorial Day weekend's coming up. And NXT's coming here to Daytona Beach. And I'll get into that shortly. I hope they're saving some of the stars for NXT Daytona. If they have, like, the third stringers come out again, Daytona Beach is an entirely different crowd. They might actually start booing and really leaving. Again, I was shocked that people left. Like, like I think it's because they had little kids, though, and at uh, 9 o'clock on a Saturday, though? I don't know, that's kind of like that special treat as a kid. You get to stay up an extra, like, half hour, hour. Tomorrow's Sunday. Well, I have to work, but I'm a hobo. So, so that, there's reasons why. I mean, it just felt like a sea show. It wasn't, definitely wasn't the, the A, A, A players weren't there. Not even their B team. Not the B team, but th like their, their, their second tier talent. It was just like the third string. Like, hey, get out there and get your reps in, guys. I can't complain. I mean, 10 bucks to be 33 rows from the, from ringside. I mean, with the exception of, of, of this. Because that's just, I don't want to be bled on. Although I wouldn't mind seeing her. Her. Ooh, she's cute looking too. I don't know. Amber Nova has too many abs. So I'll show you Amber Nova's abs. Yeah. That's a little too much for me. She just looks Casey Lennox is okay. She looks like Natalia. And I can see like her heading for her bra. But again, not really into super abs. Especially on women. Just... And that's just me too. A little bit about some programming notes. Tomorrow I will be doing a live stream. For Money in the Bank, um, for about three hours of it, you're also going to see how I actually work because I do have to do great. I do have to grade some papers online. So from six to nine thirty, it's going to be a little bit of both. I'm going to try and really limit my grading for a whole bunch of reasons. I don't think they would know. We'll see. We'll see. I'd be fired. That'd be absolutely horrible. I don't think they can actually check that though. It's weird. They'd have to like be lucky at like the right time, or I'd be unlucky. Again, I do have the work. But I do need the money. Monday, it's gonna be your typical Monday Night Raw. Tuesday, SmackDown. Thursday, I'm going to have double or nothing predictions. Because then Saturday, I'm going to the NXT show. And on Thursday, Double or Nothing predictions are maybe a guest person from the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. We'll see. Saturday, I'll be, I'm going, I'm off to the NXT here in Daytona Beach. So again, you'll see another video like this, except for it'll be Daytona Beach. And then I know. Double or nothing is that day. So I'm going to see if I can catch the replay of it on Sunday and do a reaction video Sunday 
to double or nothing. So it won't be a live stream. Too much I have to do. And I don't feel like staying up till who knows one in the morning. Because then Monday on Memorial Day, it will be a Memorial Day special. Oh, shoot. I have to do that sometimes, too. Be Memorial Day special. Monday Night Raw. And Tuesday is just going to be a normal SmackDown. Then I take off for wrestling, I think, until June 9th when Dominion is. Then I'll be doing a live stream on that. Maybe depends on my other real... I actually have to show up at job. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And I'll see everyone later. Or tomorrow. Yeah. Bye.